Hey, Porky, look, a note. What's it say? We gotta learn to read. All right, guys, this is gonna be the last video for uh, Unit 12, and uh, yes, we're bringing back some math. So, uh, what are all these crazy looking formulas, Mr. Bunting? Yeah, these are the equations for equilibrium of water. And you see these brackets over here, in case we've forgotten, that means concentration. Every time you see those brackets, you can say concentration of hydroxide, concentration of hydronium. So, I remember that water is neutral, so if, if water is neutral, it should have equal parts concentration of hydroxide and equal parts hydronium, right? That sounds right. Okay. And so these numbers, you know, when I learned about acids and bases, I know that the, uh, the pH scale goes from uh, 0 to 14, right? Mm -hmm. So these numbers kind of make sense to me. Is, do they have anything to do with the pH scale? Yeah, if we think about our, our hydronium concentration equaling our hydroxide concentration, that means it's basically talking about water. And then you see this little, this little seven up here. We already talked about water being neutral, which means it's right in the middle of our pH scale. So that's going to be our pH right there, seven. Okay, cool. So if we understand uh, the concentration of hydronium and concentration of hydroxide, we should be able to identify if a substance is an acid or a base. Absolutely. Okay. So I, I think we have some rules down here to go by. Um, and you def we definitely want to uh, remember these. And there's some stars, but I'll go ahead and make another star. Um, so if the hydronium concentration is greater than hydroxide, then and that means we've got a lot of hydrogen ions floating around, which means we'll have an acidic solution. Okay, so well, it is acidic. All right. Yeah. And if hydronium is equal to hydroxide, then then it's definitely neutral. It should it be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Definitely has a pH of seven. We just talked about that equation up top. Okay, and so lastly, I have a guess of if hydronium is less than hydroxide, then it should be should be basic, a base. Okay, yep, so let's, let's go ahead and apply those rules. What do you think? All right, let's jump into that. Okay. Uh, if the concentration of hydronium in a solution is 3.3 times 10 to the negative 4 molar, and the concentration of hydroxide is 3 times 10 to the negative 1 molar, is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? Well, can we, can we know if it's acidic, basic, or neutral right off the bat? Yeah, we should be able to, uh, should be able to compare these two. I mean, if, if hydronium is this number and hydroxide concentration is this number, I can just look at my exponents and see which one is greater. Okay. So the smaller the exponent, the larger the number, right? Right, right. So based on that, then hydroxide is greater, so it should be basic. basic. So even though there's a bunch of numbers there, I didn't really have to do any math. So just compare. Just compare. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Easy. So what if we have to do math? I mean, we might not get into it here, but... Oh, this, yeah, this is one where we'll have to actually do some math. Okay. It doesn't look like it's going to be too hard. We only have one number there. So, um, is, this, is this equilibrium of water equation, is that found on our formula charts? Yes, it oh, is. So, I don't even have to memorize this. Nope, awesome. we don't have to memorize it. Awesome. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into it. If the hydronium is 2.3 times to the negative 6 molar, what is the concentration of hydroxide? That's your first question. Then after you've figured that out, tell us if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. Okay. So? Okay, so I'm going to use this formula first, right? Okay, all right. So I know hydronium concentration times the hydroxide concentration is always equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 molar. Or we, we could write this 
if my eraser will work, could write this like this. Either way you want to write it, it's just fine. Okay. So if I know that is true, then I can just plug this number into the concentration for hydronium. Okay. And I should be able to mathematically figure that out. Okay. So we have 2.3 times 10 to the negative 6 molar times hydroxide, which I guess would be our x, our variable trying to find, okay. equals 1.0e negative 14. So how do I solve it from here if I've got a variable times a number on the left? Well, I want to get hydroxide by itself, so I'm going to divide by what's being multiplied. Okay. So it would be the concentration of hydroxide equals 1e negative 14 divided by 2.3e negative 6. That's not, a, that's not too bad. Okay, it's so these, these will cancel. Mm -hmm. And that should leave me with my hydroxide concentration. Right. All right. So our concentration of hydroxide is 4.35 times 10 to the negative 9 molar. Okay. So now we should be able to compare the two, right? To okay. see if it's acidic or basic or neutral. So hydronium has an exponent of negative 6. Hydroxide has an exponent of negative 9. Negative 6 is bigger than negative 9, so we have more hydronium, which means we'll have a acidic solution. Awesome. That's pretty easy. Pretty simple. So just use one formula and then compare the two concentrations and we, we're good. Yeah, really just comparing the exponents is all we really have to do. Cool. Awesome. Move on. All right. Uh, this kind of goes over what we just talked about. Just another little way for us to understand this. Uh, the pH scale uses whole numbers instead of those exponents, though, right? Mm -hmm. So. Now we're dealing with an acid is anything that is less than 7 on the pH scale. All right. And a base would be anything that's greater than 7. And then, obviously, I guess water would be right in the middle because that's the neutral thing. All right. So we've got some questions to think about here. Okay. If the pH of a swimming pool is about is above the pH of 7.5, should you add an acid or a base? Well, I think we need to assume that we want the swimming pool to be 7.5, right? Yeah. Okay, if it's above it, then it's more basic, so we need to put the opposite in it to bring it back down to where we want it. So we're going to add something with a lower pH, which would be an acid. Okay, so yeah, I, I guess if we added a, a base, that would make the pH even greater, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, because we're increasing the concentration of hydroxide if we add a base. Okay. If we do that, we would make the pH go up. Awesome. Let's come back up to the top and see how we can compare our pHs and our pOHs. Remember, pH is going to be talking about acids. pOH is talking about hydroxides. A um, couple of different ways you can think of what pH stands for. Some think it's called the potential of hydrogen or the potential of hydroxides. Some say it's the partiality of hydrogens and partiality of hydroxides. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's what that P stands for. Mm -hmm. So it's really just comparing the concentrations of the two. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so I know that the concentration of hydroxide and the concentration of hydronium, if multiplied together, should equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Okay. So our, if our pH plus our pOH, if we add those together, that should give us the uh, 14 number that we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. And is this number on, is this equation on our formula charts? It is. Um, it's under the solutions section. And uh, pH is actually the negative log of the concentration of hydronium. Okay. So what would the pOH 
B mathematics. So I'm guessing the POH is the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide. Okay. So we have to do logarithms now, or can I just put the push the log button on the calculator and that's just good to go? You should be able to just push the log button. All right. And so I think there's a a slide that goes over this, or uh, a section in our notes that shows exactly the buttons to, to go over, um, so that you guys can. Uh, and if, if 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 we can't find those in the notes, we can definitely go over that in class. But um, it's simply pushing the the negative log button, and then uh, plugging that into the calculator. So if we know the concentration of hydroxide, we can find the POH, right? Mm -hmm. And if we know the concentration of hydronium, we can find pH. Right. We can combine either two of these equations to start with hydronium and find the concentration of hydroxide, or f start with hydronium and find the POH, just a combination of these equations. Okay. So we don't use a POH scale. Right. We, we stick with pH for the most part. Okay. All right, so if we go back down to this last question and compare uh, or think about this question, two clear solutions are placed in separate beakers. The first solution has a pH of 4, and the second solution is, uh, and the pH of the second solution is unknown. If the two, two solutions are mixed and the resulting pH, so the final pH is 5, what do you know about the pH and the hydroxide concentration of the unknown solution? Okay, so the first solution was an acid at pH of 4, right? and then all of a sudden it goes up to a pH of 5, so it became more basic, so we have to know that the pH of the second beaker is higher than 4. Not necessarily that it is a base, but it is more basic than the first, situa first solution. Okay, so if I mix the two, then I'd, I'd, I would have an increase, then obviously yeah, I'm dealing with something greater than four. I got you. Okay. So if it's more basic, then the hydroxide concentration should be greater, higher than the first one, right? Mm -hmm. So pH should have been greater than four. Okay. And the hydroxide concentration should be greater than our first solution. It's kind of a weird question. Yeah. But if we understand we still figure it out though. Understand bases and at, and acids we should be able to, to wade through that, right? Right. Now one more thing on this pH scale guys. Remember when we're talking if this is our zero in on this side and this is our 14 in on the other side. Remember, the stronger the acid, the lower the number. So one acid is typically stronger than a pH of 6. And a 14 base is typically stronger than a pH of 8. So it goes opposite to your intuitiveness of strength of acids. So the way I think about it is the further I get away from water, the stronger the acid and the stronger the base. That is a great way of thinking about it. Okay, cool. Awesome, more math. Let's uh, do some of these problems. Okay. So we'll want to calculate the pH if hydronium is 2.3 times 10 to the negative for molar. Okay. And is it acidic or basic? So I know that the negative log of hydronium always gives me the pH. Okay. So if I have the, the concentration, it's just then it's just take the negative log of that number, right? So we're just going to plug this number in the calculator. I'm going to hit the negative button, I'm going to hit the log button, and I'm going to hit 2.3 times 10 to the negative 4, and hit enter. That's all you got to do. Now, my calculator opens parentheses. Do I have to close parentheses for it to do it right? You don't have to, but it's always wise. Okay. All right, it gives me a pH of 3.64. Okay, so 3.64, that is less than seven. Less than seven. So that would be a acid. Definitely acidic. All right, seems easy enough. Okay. Second question here, calculate the pH if hydronium is 5.0 times 10 to the negative nine. 
is it acidic or basic? It's the same question with a different number. We're still just going to use the negative log of our hydronium concentration. Still going to find the pH. And if that pH is less than 7, it's an acid. If it's greater than 7, it's a base. If it's 7.00, it's water. Cool. So our pH is greater than 7, so it has to be a base. Awesome. It's pretty simple stuff. That's pretty straightforward. Is that as hard as it gets? I, I, think, I think so. Okay. So now I'm comparing pH and pOH. Okay. And I know that there's a formula that compares the two. Like that. Okay, so simple addition and subtraction problems. So, okay, so pH is going to be pH 14 is. minus the pOH. All right. So pH, I'm going to plug in 12.3 there. So 14 minus 12.3 should be 1.7. All right. 1.7, less than 7. Once again, we have an answer. Cool. That was pretty easy. Yeah. I almost didn't need to show my work on that, but do I still need to? Yes. Okay. I always show your work just in case you make a mistake. We can at least know you're trying to get to the right place. Mm -hmm. So here we're trying to calculate hydroxide concentration, and we're given hydronium, and then asked to find if it's acidic or basic. Okay. So mm -hmm. we have two concentrations in our question, so we need to use an equation that has both concentrations in there. So let's go back to our very first equation we talked about. Concentration of hydroxide times the concentration of hydronium equals 1.0 E negative 14 molar. And it's just uh, plug it in there. So OH, so OH, the concentration of hydroxide times the concentration of hydronium, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 10 molar equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 molar. And just like last time, we're going to end up dividing our 1e negative 14 by 1.0 times 10 to the negative 10. Just dividing both sides by those. And that will give us our concentration of OH. <coughs> Now we go back to comparing hydroniums and hydroxides again. Just look at the exponents. Hydroxide is negative 4. Hydronium is negative 10. So is this going to be an acid or a base? Well, hydroxide is bigger, so it's going to be a base. Remember, negative 4 is bigger than negative 10. Yeah, smaller negative exponent means a bigger number. Okay. We got dough. We got dough. We got dough. Hey, hey.